doing? What are you doing, baby? I have to go talk to the people. For what? Safari West! You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Or what? Back in before the show! Okay, we gotta go this way. Mm -hmm. That's the office, right? That's where we are right yes. now. Okay. We gotta walk all the way down there. Today we're right outside of Santa Rosa in Sonoma County at Safari West. It's a 400 acre private wildlife preserve. We're gonna be staying the night in one of their luxurious safari tents. Glamping! This video is going to be a two-parter. The first one is going to be the animals that we can walk around and check out. They also have a safari <gasps> that we'll be doing in the second video, where we'll see a lot of bigger animals, giraffes, zebras, that type of stuff. But before we get to that, it's time to get some food. Yeah. Okay. So we walk straight in there, I think. <laughs> yeah, I've eaten some. Ooh. These potatoes are freaking good. Okay, it's the insides. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. I don't know what this is, but it looks really good. Why is it so close to me? Why do you have to just show me? I just wait for you to say something funny like that, and then I turn the camera to it, to my face, and I go... Okay, are you ready? Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, grab the map. It's got the code on it. Okay. Okay. This one. Yes. After dinner, we decided we were going to go out and get our first look at the animals that we could see. That looks silly. Does it look silly with my head? Yeah, look at my hat. Are you recording? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like, I like that. That's much better. Okay, you ready? Okay. Oh, it is already very dark. Yeah, I know. We were walking around in the dark, but we couldn't see anything. So, cut to tomorrow. Good morning. Excited. But has anyone ever been here before? No. But so you say random things the entire time, and you'll never know. Perfect. <laughs> this is Jackson. He'll be our tour guide for both the walking tour and the safari. Don't think I'm going to have a terrible time with you guys on this one, but the main rule is just please don't walk along the rocks. Those are part of our barriers to keep us away from our animals. So we're going to head down. We should go straight on down. Huh? Nope. Now we have two different species of flamingos. We have the whiter ones, those are African greater flamingos, and then we have the pinker ones, those are the Caribbean flamingos. So two species. They can be much louder than that too. Uh, yeah, they like to hear their own voice. As we are walking through our aviary, we just have a couple of different rules. And the main rule is just please stay on the path as a group. But as we are walking around, there are some more friendly birds. If they do come up to us, I don't see them right now, but if they do come up to us, just please don't try and touch them. But if you get uncomfortable, let me know. I can move them out of the way. Okay. 
It looks like they might, or the keepers might have just put uh, put their food pans down, so they're all getting pretty excited. Mostly our ducks. But for example, this white bird. So it looks like a peacock. So believe it or not, that large bluebird in the creek is actually a pigeon. Yeah, it's called a Victoria crown pigeon. I think it's a about these gray birds here. They're called demoiselle cranes. The one in the middle, next to you, uh, she's the more friendly one. So she was hand raised by us, so she imprinted on people instead of other birds. So she's very friendly. Demoiselle, French, the little lady. They are not Aww. from France. A small population of them will go from northern India to northern Mongolia. So that means they would have to fly over the Himalayas. Well, it's not range in the world. So this bird can fly up to around 25,000 feet in the air. <laughs> Hi, you. Hi. Hi. Come on, Bernice. 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 Come before we head on out, are there any last minute questions? No. earlier everything from here on out this is what you can walk around after the tour um so that's the area is the only thing you need to go for yeah take a nap these are the two of our striped hyenas there's one directly in front of you um with the striped hyenas they're a little different than the spotted hyena that we're used to they're a little bit smaller and they don't make the iconic kind of they eat the exact same thing. They're scavengers. So anything that's left over from other predators, um, lions, leopards, maybe other hyenas, this animal is going to come and grab after. They have an incredibly good bite pressure. Um, so with the uh, striped hyenas, they're going to crunch up bones, anything that's left over. Not quite a dog. Um, they're a little different they're called in the hyena day family. So it's only the three hyena species, brown hyenas, striped hyenas, and spotted hyenas, and then uh, the aardvark, which is own little creature. Well, we're going to keep moving on down this side. It's a caracal, or a caracal, a zebra, zebra, same thing. We do have a girl, she just had a baby though, so that's why they were in the barn. Um, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, they're letting us know at 12 o'clock today. But with the caracals, they're incredibly strong. This cat's around 30 pounds. They can catch prey up to three times their body weight, though. So up to around 90 pounds. But if he walks by us and you see those big back legs again, the giant springs. Because they can also jump up to eight feet in the air. They're incredible wow. athletes. We've got these two cheetahs in front of us here. These are our two girls. There's one to the left of the stump, and there's one to the right of it, a little bit farther away. But with the cheetahs, this is what they do the most of the day. They're like your average house cat. They don't move unless they have to. Breakfast and dinner are the only times they have to. These are potus monkeys. The main thing I want to point out is the boy on the left. You can't see our girl on the right over there, but the boy has that dog life on. This is actually the fastest primate in the world. We just saw the fastest land animal. But if we just had the Olympics, if we had the Olympics with monkeys, lemurs, apes, humans, all the primates, they'd smoke everybody in the spring. They can run to 35 miles per hour. Pretty amazing. That dog-like body helps them. But with this monkey, you might have seen it on her boy before he went into the back. He almost has a bright white mustache. That's actually what Dr. Seuss made the war of. So he saw this animal, went with it, and he ended up with the Laura. The cheetahs, you might have noticed on the caracal, they had pointed ears, she does have rounded ears. So usually what that's going to mean with cats, they have pointed ears, and at radar dishes, they are usually going to use their hearing to hunt, but if they're a rounded ear like a cheetah, they're usually going to use their eyesight. Which is exactly what's going to happen here. So usually this cat is going to like to stand on high places, and I found things. Um, sometimes, occasionally, they'll go on top of safari trucks, so that they can just see higher, and they can see incredibly far um, a good amount of distance but something that we just found out with them is we didn't think cheetahs hunted at night but um, a documentary just came out i believe it's called night on earth i might be getting it slightly wrong it's on netflix but um they were it's all based on night activity so they found that cheetahs hunt a third of their hunts at night and they really only do it with the full moon because they don't have amazing eyesight so they at night at least so they use their 
uh, the stuff where the moon was. Third way up top to the left. These are called trumpet or horn bills. There we go. Don't you wish you heard that every single day? So with the trumpet or horn bills, that's on the top of the hollow. So that's why we think he's so loud. But with the trumpeters, the idea on why he's making so much noise now is he had two babies come out of the nest about like a month, two months ago now, kind of off track. Okay, but no, it could okay. be that if he's making all the noise, all the attention is going to be brought on him and not his babies. So it would keep his babies safe. It's just a guess though. We're not 100% sure. But when they are ready to have eggs, what the girl will do is they'll go inside of a hole in a tree and then they'll wall it up with mud. So there's only a little slit in the hole where they can pass their beaks through it. Uh, so you can kind of see the structure in the back that's on top of the post. You can see a little bit of the mud is still there. It's going to be much smaller though when she's actually in there. Because for about 30, 40 days, she'll sit on the eggs and see if she can them. But once they hatch, that doesn't mean that they'll come out right away. Because they don't have feathers, they're giant chicken nuggets, they can't do anything. So yeah, they don't have, they're just giant blobs. But with the trumpeter hornbills, the, uh, about 30 to 40 more days, she'll raise those babies. So for about 70 to 80 days, he fed her food and water the entire time. She never came out. Yeah, so before she has eggs, he has to give her sticks, objects, food, pretty much to make sure that he can provide for her. And they agree with that. I'm just gonna squeeze behind you guys and we're gonna go back down this way. So this is our Debrazos monkey. We do have a lady in here with him, but I'm not too sure where she just went. But with the Debrazos monkey, you can see our boy on the right. No matter if you're a boy or a girl with this animal, you're always going to have a beard and need a brow. Because that is how they talk to each other. Um, so what happens with them is just like us with our facial expressions, we can kind of tell our emotions based on that. So that beard and unibrow will show off their facial expressions more, so they can almost see what they're saying to each other. Because just like that trumpet or hornbill, if you're making noise, easier to find you. If you're not making noise, harder to find you. So they communicate without having to make noise. They still make small squeaks, grunts, honks, but it's usually pretty quiet. This morning I got some carrots, peas, some monkey biscuits. That's what those little log things look like. Um, they get a lot of different fruits because they are omnivores. Well, there's our girl up top. Um, <laughs> she's very mischievous. She grabs anything she can get. You might notice that all the rose bushes are at the perfect length where she can't grab them anymore because she's already reached out and ate all the ones she could. So, yeah. She's looking for something now. She's very mischievous. Definitely one of our cuter animals that people get to. So these are uh, two of our fennec boxes. This is full grown. This is actually the smallest naturally occurring canine. So the only dog, fox, wolf you would find smaller than them would be a chihuahua. Well, we make chihuahuas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not as much of breeding. But um, they're waiting for the breakfast. That's why they're still out because they are nocturnal. So they're more active at night versus the day. So usually towards the earlier or later morning, they're gonna go down to their burrows, sleep for the rest of the day. <laughs> but we got um, lucky and they're still out. So they have to go the but they are from the Sahara Desert. So any animals that we see that are like light in color, specifically white, it's usually gonna mean that they're from the Sahara Desert. So this is actually the end of our walking tour. So we're gonna take about a 10 minute break. We're gonna be back up where we met earlier in the boarding area. As we waited for the tour to continue, we decided to go check out some of the other things that they had that aren't on the walking tour. Little oh, guy, hello. you're very tall. Wait, come back. I need to take a picture. I don't think that's for you, sir. How are you doing? Hello. 
that's the end of this one, guys. Oh, no, Thanks for coming rocks. and checking us out. If you want to see bigger animals like Gerald the giraffe here, then come back and check out part two. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and hit the dangly doodly bell. Sue! They do. They want to love. You want love?